Our virtual bus tour is in the Isis district to see how cane growers are using technology to minimise fertiliser use and reduce the risk of nutrient runoff into the Great Barrier Reef. Chris Russo is filling a spray tank with a liquid nitrogen fertiliser blend before making a few last minute adjustments to the machine which is a high capacity self-propelled sprayer. It's more commonly used in applying herbicide but it's been modified. We're driving a Miller Nitro 5240 on the design of the Miller uh, liquid injection or nitrogen injection bar. They made it to suit corn uh, and I, when I started doing the research about it, you know, I figured corn and cane weren't too much different. Um, and so then, yeah, we went about making it to suit our sugar cane. The nitrogen injection bar covers five cane rows after being reduced from 12 to 9 metres in width. The diameter of the coulters has been increased so nutrient can reach deeper into the root base, further reducing the risk of it escaping into the environment. So when we bought it, it had a 20 inch coulter on and we used it last season. We just weren't happy. We didn't think we were getting the depth. So now we're getting a full, getting a full uh, four inches of depth on that disc quite easily. We actually, it goes through six inches sort of thing. So these are riding on the thrash and we're getting, cutting, cutting through the ground that deep. So hopefully putting the fertiliser in that deep. Under GPS guidance in a controlled traffic farming system, the machine travels between the rows with a two centimetre accuracy. Coulters either side of the cane stool cut the trash blanket, leaving a narrow gap where spray jets inject the liquid nitrogen. It's being used in combination with a granular fertiliser at the start of the growing season. That split application, we, we think, you know, it's like sitting down, how can you sit down and have your breakfast, lunch and dinner all in one go? We can try and, uh, and, and spread, it, spread it out a little bit so it, you're not giving it everything in that one, one hit. Some people are saying up to 60% of our nutrients are being lost through volatilisation or, or leaching. So um, if we can target it, when it needs it, the amount required, hopefully we're, we're saving ourselves a few dollars too. The self-propelled sprayer's high ground clearance allows Chris to apply nutrient much later in the growing cycle than what's normally achievable with a traditional fertiliser box. This stage of the growing cycle is when the crop can benefit most from sub-surface injection of nutrient. We're fertilising generally now about 100 days post-emergence in the crop cycle, so 100 to 150 days is where they're telling us that the cane needs its most uptake. Of, of nitrogen, which is you know what we need to get the cane to grow. There'd be four foot of stick on that cane, and we're not we're not knocking anything over, we're not breaking anything. So um, that's the biggest advantage. Working within the six easy steps framework for best practice in nutrient management, the split application strategy is delivering promising first up results. An on-farm trial funded by the Australian Government Reef Program is in progress and Chris is hoping to secure additional funding to assess the benefits of using liquid fertiliser in tandem with granular fertiliser across the entire crop cycle. We found that we're at this stage with that split application we're saving about $100 a hectare. We've dropped our rate from about 140 units, our six easy steps, uh, what's required, to 110, so 40 granular and 70 liquid. Obviously we're doing some research at the moment trying to, we're doing some uh, different trials in paddocks to see what we can what we can get away with. We don't want to go cutting ourselves back too short and, and losing yield. For a tech savvy grower like Chris, this new technology at his fingertips poses exciting questions. With an in-cabin GPS and a pressure spray rate controller at the ready, can he achieve targeted variable rate nutrient application based on what each plant needs? As the growing season draws to a close, unmanned aerial vehicle pilot Josh Kachopola visits the Russo family's home farm at Farnsfield. Josh works with the agronomy team at Northern Agri-Services and is using a UAV or drone to undertake an aerial crop survey. We're trying now to work in with the with the drone technology to be able to go over and, and see potentially what's happening with the paddock. Are we putting the fertiliser on at the right time? Are we putting the right amount on? Hopefully in time, it's not going to happen overnight, but in time we'll be able to go full rate control coming from what the drone mapping is finding 
loading it straight into our GPS and the rate controller will work on what the, uh, what the drone mapping has said that the crop requires. Using a tablet device, Josh marks out the intended flight path, then uploads it to his quadcopter. And now all we do is we just draw the map around the cane where we're going to be at. So right now you can see a GPS point of where we are. We're going to fly this little paddock here. And all you do is you just drag the GPS points to the corners of the block. The drone flies on a set path as a multi-spectral camera captures images of the crop. The near-infrared images it produces can identify crop stress that's not visible to the human eye. When you look at a plant, it looks quite green and most people would look at it and go, yep, it's fine. But what the multi-spectral camera can do is to be able to find when this plant is stressed before you can actually see it. Being able to do that, then you can then go on later on and, and treat whether it needs more nitrogen or needs something else to make it grow better. The imagery is useful to agronomists who can apply algorithms like the Normalised Difference Vegetation Index or NDVI, which determines a plant's photosynthetic capacity. It's still early days, but Chris is hoping that by undertaking aerial surveys over an entire crop cycle, he'll get an accurate long-term picture of a crop's health and its nutrient requirements. It could mean substantial reductions in fertiliser use. The picture we're trying to paint at the moment is we would like to think that we can get some sort of end requirement of the crop at the time we fly over and then from there go through with the nitro and the liquid bar and potentially, you know, if we only need 80 units of N, we put on 80. If we need a, a touch more to get the crop through, then that's what we're, you know, we want to do. Keep to our six easy steps, but put in what's required. You know, we've worked out that by dropping from 160 units to 110, we're saving $100 a hectare. What if we can drop to 40 or 60 units and get the same result, same crop at the end? In an industry built on innovation, finding ways to use new technology to benefit the farm and the environment makes good business sense. We're in an age where new things are coming every day. It's when a computer was built 15, 20 years ago, we thought that was, how would you get much better than that? And, and now look at, look at what's available to us. We've got to be able to get the right tools to help us make a, informed decisions with crop health, what's required, when it's required, and not just the old way of, this is what we've done for 30 years, so let's just do it that way. Informed decisions with crop health that help cane growers save money, boost productivity, and keep nutrient where it needs to be on the farm.